I am officially live. Welcome everybody to the Tuesday 2 p.m. weekly show called The Hempibition. And uh, as we take here about 60 seconds and wait for uh, you beautiful folk to jump on, so we have somebody to talk to, we never talk at, we talk to. And uh, then I'm going to tell you guys about the Facebook rules. I'm going to mention a little giveaway, and then I'm going to introduce you guys to a complete, complete badass. Most of you know her, and some of you don't. But the ones that, well, the ones that know her, you're going to get to know her better. And for those of you that don't know her, you're welcome. It's about to get down. So welcome, everybody. I see some cool, cool people jumping on already. Uh, what's up, Wayne, Roberta, Billy, Jackie, on and on. Christine, hello. I see you guys are tagging. You don't even know why you're tagging yet. Maybe you do because I've already conditioned you for my other Hempibition shows and uh, Joanna and Chris and Paula and Beth and Heidi and woo woo. This is going to be a, it's already a shindig here. Cocktails may be in order. <clears throat> we'll see how this goes. We'll see what happens. So uh, welcome everybody. I just froze. I should not freeze because I'm actually, I went from Wi-Fi to ethernet. So I'm actually plugged into like cable stuff. So am I freezing for anybody else? And if it's, if I am freezing and if there are issues today during the live, please know Facebook is having <clears throat> issues uh, with that, uh, with streaming. And this will, this will be a, uh, a sort of a pre, uh, pre, what do you call those? Like an appetizers, appetizer for what's about to come with the web having issues and maybe going down. And like you see, Netflix just uh, dropped off the face of the earth for a few hours in Europe, Europe and uh, somewhere else. I'm not sure, but <clears throat> anyway, it's a little preview. It's like a Costco sample for all y'all. Anyway, so let's do this. Uh, welcome to the Hempibition. Today is Tuesday, uh, the last Thursday. Jeez Louise, <laughs> I'm all over the place. It is Thursday, uh, and I actually, uh, Thursday, 2 p.m. weekly show, the Hempibition. And uh, what's cool is that this is the last Thursday of March. Next Tuesday will be the end of the month, the 31st, and then we kick into April, April 1st for one. Uh, lots of exciting stuff there. And um, <clears throat> and actually on that show, uh, who's a badass, I have a Navy SEAL, ex-Navy SEAL coming on, and today he runs a business <clears throat> where he teaches uh, people how to survive and home defense and family defense and how to protect yourself against any kind of whatever, right? So that's next Tuesday uh, on the Who's a Badass show. And uh, for today, uh, welcome, everybody. The giveaway today is going to be a bottle of Hempworks 500 milligram CBD because all y'all love that stuff. And some of you, well, some of us live on it. We're like drip, 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 drip. It's like screw Corona, drip, drip. So uh, one bottle, 500 milligram CBD oil made by Hempworks. It's not from Hempworks. It's from me, not from Hempworks. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the people, uh, the person that tags the most wins. Very simple. And uh, I almost had the results from last week to announce to you guys. I, I, I'm not prepared. But as you know, I always drop that in the comments and the winner will send me their address and I will uh, or my people will ship it off. <clears throat> With that said, uh, this because this is on a Facebook Live, you guys know what to do. You're going to, uh, outside of the tagging thing, you're going to smash the heart button, not just like, but you want to hit the heart. You want to hit uh, the, the positive emotion, Facebook uh, rules and engagement and uh, algorithm, love all that stuff. Then you're going to want to tag share, which we talked about tagging. And you do want to share, sharing this live out there, or if you're starting a watch party, start it now so your people can watch with us. And then of course, comments are very, very, very important. And, uh, I'm going to ask you guys now the first question, which will launch the engagement portion of this show by making comments. And the first question is, <clears throat> and it's the same similar question uh, I think I had for Travis. Uh, and it's this, not for Travis, but for you guys about Travis. So <clears throat> for those of you that have met or watched or seen Kristen online anywhere, what was your first question? impression of her how did she come across to you i want to know that drop that in the comments so with that said without further ado 
we, my wife and I, Tammy, we met this badass couple back in Nashville, Tennessee. Gosh, I think it was last summer, out of July, August, somewhere there. And uh, we've heard of each other. Uh, or at least we've heard of them. I don't know if they heard of us, but <laughs> we heard of them and saw them online and we're following them and Hempworks is new to us. And eventually we, you know, the road shows kick in and those were amazing. And we got to meet them in Nashville and it was the coolest thing because they're kicking ass in business. They're kicking ass as a couple, they're kicking ass as a family unit. And we're watching all this from the outside and it's like, you know, it's, some people of that success level have a stick up there, want, want, right? They're a little pompous, a little snobby, a little, a little, whatever. But <clears throat> it was so the opposite direction. And for Tammy and I, it was a really, really cool connection because that's what we are about. It's what we like. It's what we love. It's what we look to be at all times is just always us, money, no money, success, no success be you authentically at all times and you'll win. <clears throat> so we saw that in them. And <clears throat> then as we got to know them over the last few months, since last, whatever that was, gosh, July, August, we'll figure it out. Uh, we got to know them better and better and better. <clears throat> and what I love, love, love about Kristen is her passion for her man from a, from a place of not like, Oh, you know, he's hot but more from a, <clears throat> a deep rooted place of whether it's biblical, whether it's God, whether it's something from childhood, I don't know where it's from, but it's really like, she's really passionate about her relationship with her husband. And that shows everywhere. It shows it up in her business. It shows up in her family, kids, and uh, really, really admire the heck out of this woman. Without further ado, my friends, I want you guys to meet or to once again hear from the one and only badass Kristen Butler. Welcome to the Hempibition. Thank you. I'm excited. How the heck are I'm you, Hustler? I'm nervous. I feel ah. like I'm talking to like Papa Walters or something. <laughs> 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 like it's a competition to see if you, you can make me cry or something. No, no. no, no, no. Stop it's it. very easy. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to cry. We don't have time for that. We ain't got time for that. Well, cool. Thank you for all the wonderful things you said. I totally agree. As soon as we met Tammy and yourself and your girls, like it was an instant connection. I was like, these are our people. Like we can totally do life with these people. So it's refreshing, especially in this business. You need to have sideline relationships. They're so, I say your sidelines are your lifeline. You need someone that you can go to that's not, you know, financially dependent on you in some right. way. So it's just really great. And I think you guys for providing that for us. It's it's super important, especially to us. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. And you bring up a good point about the sideline stuff. I hear out there conversations about people that are saying, no, you cannot, you know, work with sideline. You shouldn't build a relationship with teams or people or leaders outside of your direct team. And I'm like, uh, bullshit. That's a point of network marketing. Anyway, we'll get into that later, but first more about you. Wow, okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so I guess, look, so my audience, I, you know, <clears throat> obviously we have everybody here. We have my people, your people, etc. some maybe new people. <clears throat> my goal for everybody is to really know. I want, I, I want everybody and me included. I want to know who, who the heck is Kristen? right? Like who, who's Kristen? What makes you, where, where's the drive? What makes you just get up and go every day? You know what I mean? So can we go back and like, tell us about your childhood, where you come from, what it was like? Can we go there? Sure. Um, so I am the oldest of four. I'm the only girl. Okay. And I come, my parents split up when I was seven. Um, so that was kind of, um, that was hard, obviously, it's hard. Sure. And they lived across the country from each other. So it wasn't like, you know, just weekends with dad or whatever. Like, we would, I would go, you know, sometimes a year without seeing one of my other parents. So, and I would go back and forth with who I lived with, basically, depending on my mood. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Um, 
But I did, I mean, obviously we all have things in our childhood that we can be like, oh, that, that scarred me or whatever. But um, I did, I had my grandmother and she was like consistent in my life. And she's also kind of like my spiritual advisor. So like, she's my go-to. She's the one that taught me how to like speak life into yourself and mm. how to um, have like affirmations and She's the one that got me started on saying I expect un- unexpected checks in the mail all the time. Wow. And we kind of started a <laughs> movement, at least with my team. I started posting like how I used to do that. And I told the story how unexpectedly I got $1,000 one time that we desperately, desperately needed. So it's kind of, she started all of that. So I have to give credit to her. Yeah. But yeah. So what else do you want well, so eldest of four, and your was ch- good childhood. Was it a uh, just a like uh, loving, supportive? You get so your ass kicked. Definitely, our wonderful parents. I don't think they had the best decision making skills when it came to their partners outside of my parents. So, oh, I really hated my step parents. <laughs> like, just to be totally blunt. Neither one of them are married to them right now, so at least they did that. But that's kind of why I bounced back and forth a lot, just because I was like escaping kind of my step parents, <clears throat> which you know I'm kind of thankful for now. Travis kind of had a similar situation. He, his parents also divorced when he was seven, and we're the same age, only a month apart. So it was kind wow. of crazy. That our lives did run parallel to each other, but it really made us so steadfast that nothing was going to break up our marriage because we didn't want our kids to have step parents ever. Nah. <laughs> so we were like, we're going to make this work because we don't want our kids to have the same experience. And I mean, don't get me wrong. People have you know, way worse situations. Like I'm not trying to say it was that bad, but it definitely wasn't ideal. And it definitely wasn't what we wanted for our family. We wanted that strong right. family unit for them. So it definitely at least pushed us to make sure that we stayed strong for them. Got it. <clears throat> Travis is coming in. I texted him to see if he can get you a, a pair of uh, headsets. The audio's uh, just coming in and out a little bit. <clears throat> oh, hold on. I'm trying to connect. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, take your time. There's literally no rush. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'll fill in as uh, you guys are listening. Uh, these episodes go to the Hempibition podcast and eventually the Hempibition YouTube channel. The podcast is up and running. Uh, so everybody listening, go to iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and uh, some other badass one. Follow this, uh, the Hempibition. Kristen, this episode, for example, will be up there in about a week. And uh, that's the point of these is to just get the message out, <clears throat> uh, talk to leaders, and and understand you know, that we're all basically, we're all the same. We're all coming from, you know, we're all born at one point and then there's a journey. And then what you do with that journey is really up to you. And it's like, well, you know, she comes from nothing and he comes from nothing and they were able to kick ass and have all the success. Then what? So can I, right? So it creates that me too factor. That's the purpose of these shows. That's the purpose of the conversations. Are you, are you connected? Not yet. Okay, take your time. There's literally no rush because our people love us and they'll just hang tight. <laughs> What's up, brother? What's up? I got to help her out here. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. There's literally, uh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> right here. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So back to uh, the show's The Hempibition and Who's a Badass, both on the, uh, the platforms. Uh, please go subscribe, hit five stars, leave a comment, please. And, um, and, uh, yeah, we'll have some fun. You tell me when, <clears throat> when you give me a thumbs up, I will, um, I'm trying. take your time. It is all good. Okay. So, uh, for those of you that had joined us, uh, after the first few minutes of the top of the hour there, we, um, <clears throat> we talked about a, uh, giveaway. We're doing a half, uh, half cheese, half a bottle. I'm going to cut a bottle of CBD oil in half and I'm going to ship that out. I'm kidding. 
Uh, we're doing a 500 milligram bottle of CBD oil, and uh, the person that wins will have tagged the most people in this live. So the winner will have tagged the most people. <clears throat> And then, of course, I announce it, and then, of course, you'll send me your address, and then, of course, we'll ship it out, and you'll enjoy it. So every week we do this. What's up, John Campbell, East Coast? What's up, brother? And Mike, I'm not connecting? Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> and if, if it's not connecting, screw it. We can just keep... I just want I want the audio to be as good as possible. I want it to be gooder, gooder, gooder. Probably you have ten thousand AirPods listed. Yep, I. <laughs> it's like I have mine right here, but I never ever use them. It's so funny. <clears throat> I just. Uh, it, or it's making the noise, but it's not. I don't hear audio. Bear with us, people. <clears throat> Bear with us because you know it's exciting. There's Mom Gail. Mom Gail is here. I don't know Gail Litz. Do you hear What's me up? Hi, Mom Gail. Okay, so maybe a few, maybe uh, closer. Like there's uh, the audio like comes in and out. So I don't know what that is, but there's like a swooshing noise. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Right. Okay. Thirty more seconds, kids. I, I promise you, we'll be right back on track here, and uh, we're gonna knock this thing out. So, for those of you, meanwhile, <clears throat> as we're doing this, if you guys know anyone that uh, you feel I should interview on the Hempibition show, please send me a, a DM on. Um, on uh, Facebook, meaning Messenger, <clears throat> anybody that you feel should be interviewed, somebody that's done some cool things, like, of course, Kristen Butler here, who's gone from uh, a great, great story to phenomenal, phenomenal success. So anybody like that, uh, please understand, I obviously, I want to interview them, and um, I'll, take, uh, I'll take recommendations. <clears throat> so, Kristen, if it's not connecting, we'll just have to screw Sorry, it. I don't know what's wrong. Nope. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going. It is all good. I'd rather people get your message. Um, <clears throat> yay. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. We'll try this. Hopefully it's better. Yeah, it's all good. So, uh, so interesting childhood. Uh, and obviously that moving forward now, you mentioned that it, you brought stuff with you into the relationship with Travis to where you didn't want certain patterns and you fought for the opposite. Yeah, so I met Travis when I was 17. Holy Toledo, Batman. Yeah, I was actually, I had just broken up with my boyfriend. Uh-huh. And I was a newly single woman. Whoop, whoop. And his cousin invited me to go to a party. And so I was kind of on a date with his cousin. It was a first date, nothing serious. And I walk in, and there's Travis. And there's instantly a spark. And he was just charming and funny. And so he was very attractive. And I was like, my date was super drunk. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to talk to him. <laughs> and pretty much we have been together ever since wow. that day. It was kind of crazy because um, at that point in time, I was living with my mom. And so she's a single mom of four, working two jobs. And... I don't want that situation for my life. I'm like, I'm not traveling this road. Like, I'm going to be financially independent. I'm going to make my own money. Um, not necessarily the entrepreneur path, but I was like, I'm not doing this. So when I met him and fell in love at 17, we, all, we ended up getting married at 17 also. Holy shnikes. Because we both have um, later birthdays. So... I wanted to get married before I started college in the fall. So my birthday's in September, his is in August. So we're like, let's get married in July. And then, you know, I'll go to college, all of that. And then, um, you know, kind of about being 17, you're kind of dumb about stuff. Yeah. Like, we're married now. Like, <laughs> we don't have to be as careful with certain activities. 
you know, because it takes, I mean, it takes like a year or two years or whatever to have a baby. Like it doesn't just happen. Oh, yeah. um, but it did just happen on our honeymoon. So instantly we're married. I'm pregnant instantly. And there's so much pregnant. instantly. <laughs> you so met instantly. Good. I had to drop out of college. So we don't even really know what it is to be married and not have kids because nine months mm. after we got married, yep. we and Jay. So we don't even know what that life is like, <laughs> honestly. But um, I do believe things happen for a reason. And, you know, I had to meet him at that point in my life because who knows, like, what would have happened from there, you know, where our lives would have taken us. And I definitely wasn't staying in that small town that we lived in. I was out of there. So he's very much like, I'm staying here. We live in a very rural area in Maryland, um, in between the bay and the beach. It's a very rural, small town area. Nice. He just wanted to stay there. He <clears throat> had never seen the world at all. And he was like, this is where I'm going to stay. And I'm like, my father was in the, the army. So I had lived in Germany. I had lived in many different places. So oh, lived, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm not staying here. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> the world's much bigger and better than where we are. So yeah. it stopped me so we could ultimately Interesting. So you guys are both, I didn't, well, maybe I, maybe I forgot, but you're both from Maryland. Yeah. So you met there, of course, instantly got married, instantly he got you pregnant. So we'll, we know it's his fault. I get it. I've met the guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then you instantly, at what point did you guys move to Florida? So it was kind of interesting. We, so let's go back to 2008. Okay. We had, we were entrepreneurs. Like he got his business license when he was 18. We started building houses. We built our first home ourselves when we were 18. Like I literally helped him build it. Wow. Um, so all these things happened. We had a really successful landscaping business that was just design build. We didn't do maintenance or anything like that. So basically new contracts all the time. And we were doing these down at the beach where people from Washington DC, you know, had their detox. So we built a really incredible business. We had just taken out a loan to expand our business and get a commercial location. Like we were 23 at the time. We were doing amazing. We thought we were total rock stars. Invincible. Yeah. Untouchable. Yes. Oh um, yeah. Like, we are badass. Look at us. Yeah. <laughs> and just not thinking about, hey, rainy day could come like we're like this life is going to go on forever like oh yeah and then the financial crisis happened and immediately no one is spending money landscaping or beach house like that is like the first thing that goes and our business went from doing over a million dollars a year to eighty thousand the next year instantly wow and it yep. was like right. we were affected we were one of the first affected really like we lost our house before like Actually, I thought we, we started the foreclosure process back in 2007. That's how fast everything started happening for us. And then we were homeless by 2008. We had all our vehicles were repossessed, all our equipment that we owed money on. Like, everything was gone. Wow. And we were forced to move in with his mom at her her family estate which was a campsite and so we remodeled the office to the campsite as like a makeshift apartment for us to live in it didn't have heat or air like none of those things like we were trying to use like space heaters things like that like it was it was an awful time and about a month after we moved in i found out i was pregnant again with my third child I'm telling you, th that guy, you got to watch out for him. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is happening? Like, yeah. cruel joke. Like, why is this happening? That's funny. And I was, like, seriously depressed. Like, I am not, like, just naturally a depressed person. I usually can find silver linings. Like, I can cheer myself up pretty easy. But I think it was the pregnancy hormones and just the situation. And Travis yeah. <laughs> got a job in Annapolis, Maryland, so he was gone. Wow. From like sun up to sun down. And I just was very, very depressed. And mm -hmm. so we were like, we got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Like, we can't 
make this business work. We're landscapers. You can only work seven months out of the year. Florida, you can work year round. Yep. I was like, so why are we not in Florida? Like, we have nothing left here. Because <laughs> it was always before, we always wanted to move to Orlando. That was our favorite place in the world. But we had a business. So if you can't just leave a successful business, well, right. then that successful business was gone. So it was like, what are we here for? And so <laughs> we, long story short, my son was born. He instantly brought the joy back to my life. And mm -hmm. six months later, I shattered my femur and almost died in an accident. That was... One of the hardest things I've ever lived Why? If he told you about the tragedy of my accidents, I'm not going to go into details about that. But, but why was it hard for you, though? <clears throat> I, I was always like the care provider for my family, and I couldn't even save myself. For six months. And he had to totally take care of me. Um, but it's it's like it's so crazy when you look back because if he had been working, he wouldn't have been able to take care of me. But because of what had happened, he was home with me. And so he could take care of me during that time. And I think the love between us grew so much more. Because I realized just what a selfless person he was and how much he truly did love me unconditionally. And, and I got to experience that. Um, but at that moment, I was like, we were going to sell our property and have a lot of money to come buy houses cash and flow. That was the plan. And that didn't end up working out. And I'm like, I just, this happened like a month before my accident. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go anyway. Like, let's just solve a little bit of stuff we have left and let's just go like up it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it crutches when we moved down here. And we didn't know a single soul. I didn't know anybody who lived in Orlando. I mean, we didn't have jobs. We were like, we just want to start over. Like, we just need a fresh start. And I was like, we're going to make it happen. And so we moved to Orlando. The house, we had a really hard time finding a house because our credit obviously was terrible um, <laughs> from everything that happened. And we finally found a house that was not through a rental agency. It was through a couple. And I was like, look, we have, we had a little bit of money because we had sold just about everything that we had to come down. And we found a place and it was right behind a church called Genesis Church. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is our new. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and so we started our life there, and it was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm not built to work for other people. I lasted like one day at my job, and I cried all the way home, and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> like, I think Travis lasted like 30 days at his job, and he was like, I can't do this. Like, you need to be self employed. Mm, <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> very nice. Can we go back to, because <clears throat> I think we you went very quickly through a chunk of your life, and we also went through the we call we call it the Great uh, Depression of two thousand eight, two thousand nine, ten. All that that was just it was horrible at the time, but the lessons were priceless. So let's go back to that. So when you got when you say you were homeless, like a lot of people throw that out there, like oh we lost our home, we were homeless. Like were you guys really homeless or? I mean, we had a place to sleep because we ended up moving in with his mom. But to me, the definition of homeless is you don't have an address that's yours. And we didn't have a rental home. We didn't have a house. Like, we literally were living in a basement that we tried to somewhat make into an apartment for our family. So we weren't living in our car or anything like that. We definitely had a family that would take us in. Got it. Got it. Got it. And <clears throat> for you guys to go through those times, uh, as everybody had different experiences with that economic situation, <clears throat> how, I guess for you, what did you learn? Oh, All right, I'll see. Yep. yeah. Take your time. 
<laughs> yeah, I sent I sent Travis a recording so he can hear uh, what's coming across. There's like a what what's you know what's awesome like when you talk in between your sentences, there's like a, a wave, like an ocean wave that comes through. It's like, shh. so I'm like, I'm meditating right now. I'm just going deep. <laughs> You're putting me in a trance, damn it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, just, we'll try. Just keep going. Um, <clears throat> so I guess what I want to know is from that, from that journey of losing everything, having kids husband what happened to you in those times what 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 were you faced with as a wife and a mother what emotions came up and what and, and then today what do you use from those times to where it's like f no uh never again so it's kind of crazy um because travis and i we were pretty successful pretty early on in our marriage, like in our business. Like, you know, within a couple of years, our business was really making money and we were doing well. And I felt like <laughs> everyone was like, don't get married. Even my mom was like, she agreed to let us get married because she knew Travis you know, had a great job he could provide for us. And I wasn't gonna be, you know, on assistance and things like that. And we just did really well. And for all that to kind of go away, like there's a lot of pride that came out. Like more so like I didn't want them to be right. Like <laughs> like we we can beat this and I don't want to be I don't want to be like a statistic, like, oh, you got married young and you know, like a teen mom and all this and this happened. I was like, no, this is not gonna happen. And so it really did bring out a lot of of determination and I felt like that started in me in my childhood like my brother and I the oldest brother him him and I are a lot closer in age so we you know experience things together at the same time and I felt like what it produced in me was strength and determination and ambition and what it produced in him was more weakness and and I was like so that kind of started then and then when we went through all this financial stuff it just kind of reignited the fight inside of me mm. <clears throat> where we were kind of like just coasting you know life was good so it wasn't really pushing me to be my best self and you know what is the next level and with this happening I was like you know this isn't going to happen like, I'm not going down without a fight <laughs> like this might be happening right now, but this isn't going to be our legacy. Right. We are going to beat this. Very interesting. So, <clears throat> and then the other uh, part of your little uh, uh, chunk of conversation there was the the car accident, Butler, your uh, Butler, uh, Travis, uh, and your con his connection to you and his him being the selfless badass that he is. So for you guys, so of course I get it. There was, there's an op awesome emotional connection there from that. How, how does that show up today? That for both of you guys is not just for me, but for our family and for our team and for our friends, like that is probably one of his greatest qualities is how selfless he is. And I, don't think that I really recognized that in him until that had happened. Mm. And so he, and he's like a protector. <laughs> it, we've gotten a lot of fights over his protectiveness. Yeah. <laughs> and not just for me, but just random strangers. And I'm like, look, <laughs> you don't need to be getting in everybody's business. Yeah. Like, trying to save the world. Yeah. Like he always just, He's always fighting for someone like he hates to see injustice and things like that. And yep. he is a big fighter for, you know, the little guy and things like that. And so it's one of the things I love about him, but it also drives me crazy because <laughs> I'm like, look, I don't need you going to jail. <laughs> ah. in. Like, That's funny. Yeah. So do you think there are different levels of being in love? For sure. Um, 
So we've been together 21 years and it's kind of crazy because we go, I even see it in our own relationship. I'll obviously like more of that infatuation in the beginning. Um, sometimes we straight up hated each other. Like I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Like it was always the best. Um, thankfully we both didn't hate each other at the same time. And when the other one was like, this sucks, the other one was like, no, you're not <laughs> getting out of it that easy. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was more early on in our relationship because we were so young. Like, we didn't even know who we were as people then. And what all of our struggle has produced in us is a comfort knowing that, you know, we're each other's ride or die. Like, we have each other's back no matter what. And we faced almost anything that you could face at some level. And we know that it can't break us. And so having that comfort to know, like, hey, no matter what happens in life, like, your partner's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. They're going to be your strength for you. You know, sometimes I have to be his strength, and sometimes he has to be my strength. Um, but we're always there for each other. And more so recently, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my weight loss or something. <laughs> he can't stay <laughs> off you. Again? Uh, Damn it. He's always been like that. He, yeah. Um, no, that wasn't, that's not a new thing. Um, <laughs> it's always been like that. But I don't know, kind of more that more lovey, mm. like butterfly feelings has kind of come back again into mm. our relationship, even though we've been married this long and a lot of romance and things like that have, you know is coming back more and so it's kind of cool to have both yeah so that's exciting that's interesting so uh <clears throat> that's really interesting when you say more recent would you say that it's in the last like three four five months or more than that um yeah probably a little bit more than that okay um, probably closer to like nine months or so. Okay. Last year was a hard year. It's so funny. Like, I don't know if I'm speaking ahead, but we made more money last year than we probably made our entire lives leading up to that collectively. Yep. But it was also one of the hardest years. Absolutely. Um, so money does not solve your problems. <laughs> and it amplifies them, right? Yeah, we just had different problems, problems yep. that we weren't necessarily ever faced with before yep. and different obstacles. And Travis and I are both probably a couple of the most ambitious people you will ever meet. And that can be a double-edged sword. You can also like burn yourself out. And that's what I did last year. I burned myself out so bad. Mm. My health was really bad. My blood pressure was like, like, <laughs> every time I would go somewhere and they would take my blood pressure, they're like, I think you need to go to the ER. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like this, this is way, way too high. Yeah, yeah. Instead, of, instead of numbers, it just showed, damn. They were like, uh, how, like, the one woman was like, I really feel like I should send you to the ER, but. Well, the reason I'm not is because you look funky. Like, you're not displaying signs. Right. Like, you could have a stroke or things like that. Like, that's right. how cool it was. Because I never would say no to things. Because I had this fear that if I'm not going 100%, that, you know, those things will happen again. You know, I'll lose everything. And we... We, neither one of us will ever say no. Like, okay, mm -hmm. there's money to be made or if we can help people make, so they make more money and we make more money. Like, we're just going to say yes. We travel, we did all these things. Right. And this year it's kind of crazy that this quarantine is happening <laughs> yeah. because, you know, there's still another rank to go in this company that I haven't reached yet. And I did not make that goal, that my goal for this year because I understood what it would take for me to get mm, there. Nice. And I wasn't willing to compromise my health this year to do that. Amen. Said, 
this is the first year that I'm actually going to make it about me. And I can bet I put myself first ever mm. for my kids, my, my husband, my business. Like, it, I've never been first. And I'm like, of course, I'm going to still drive my business and do all those things. But it can't come at the expense of my mental health or my physical health or my spiritual health or my relationships. Like, it has to come after those. And so we just happen to be quarantined now. <laughs> yeah. And I have all this time. And it's been really good. So I even I saw some of the things creeping in this year. Like I'm like, all right, why don't we start booking a couple of things and we were trying to do an event and because of all of this we had to cancel it. And I was like, I'm not saying all this is happening because of me, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's working out for my favor because sure. I was seeing those things, I was falling back into those traps and I was like no 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 like you you can't do that to yourself like I can't I can always make more money that will always be there that's but right if I'm not healthy then it's for nothing and so I need to take care of myself and get myself as healthy as I can be in all those areas and then I'll be unstoppable but I need to do that first so then last year when you you went into this health scare, maybe health making you a priority, right? Because that's a that's a big deal. And then you we we got to this conversation by me asking about when the Travis, like you know, the concept of falling in love deeper, more, etc. So are obviously, and it sounds like that they're connected somehow. Like the closeness, like you guys got closer, felt deeper in love as you had to deal with this. Would you say that it was sort of simultaneous yeah so again i had surgery in the end of april and so he had to be my caregiver not near to the extent that he had to before but <clears throat> just stepping in and just being like okay like, you know she stepping in for me and saying you know she's not available like right yeah alone like and all of that and then i start i had weight loss surgery it's the surgery that i had and so, you know, as I start feeling better and healthier, then, you know, we started getting closer. We stopped traveling as much. We started focusing on each other a lot more because it's so easy to neglect your loved ones. I mean, especially in a business like this. Yep. Because I don't know what it is, but we're like, we have no time. Like, if we don't do it now, like, it's not going to yep. happen. <laughs> like, and it's going to run out. That is true. You should especially in this industry, the window of opportunity does close a little bit every day. Yep. But it can't be for the expense of your relationship. I mean, if I get through this and I'm a multimillionaire, but I don't have a healthy marriage or a healthy family, like, that's not good. Like, I would rather have no money and have my family. So that's a phenomenal point there <clears throat> because, you know, you guys have done it. We've done it. Uh, and everybody out there listening, whether it's live replay, etc., <clears throat> everybody wants that the money, right? Everybody's like, man, I got to make that million. I got to have the 10 houses. I got to have that Benz. I got to have, but where, so now you've been on both spectrums, homeless all the way to now owning a bunch of real estate. You guys are kicking ass in business. You're multimillionaire. So very opposite extremes, right? So yeah. But I, what I hear from you, and I obviously it only comes with wisdom, which means time, uh, balance. It's all about balance, right? So what would you tell everybody listening, whether they're 18 and just starting off or 50 or 60 and hurting, what, what's the fastest way to balance? Because now you've been on both sides. Yeah. So balance is such a hard thing because I think, we say that all the time, I need to balance my life, but it's it's one of the hardest things to Absolutely. do. Absolutely, yep. And so, you know, my lifestyle is a little bit different. What I try to do as much as possible is just have my, you know, my family. Obviously, my husband and I do this together. Um, I try to integrate them together more. So it's not necessarily like my family is a separate thing, that I can still work my business and my family can still be involved. So 
you know, my, my son, he's going to be 20 in a couple of weeks. He wow. is a part of our business. And he also kind of is one of my assistants also. So he can kind of learn the business, but he also does shipping and things like that. Like, yeah, yeah. I want to do. Start at the bottom. Yeah. And my daughter helps me. Absolutely. She's 17. And so I'm kind of, she's done team trainings for us about dealing with haters. Like, oh, nice. <laughs> I try to get them more involved so it doesn't feel like, hey, like this is separate time. Right. And so they're actually, they're a part of our dream too. And so there are going to be times that we have to travel and we have to leave and they won't be there. Um, but they, they understand it more because they, we all have a common family dream together that we're, trying to accomplish so got it <clears throat> very cool so let's go into there's so many topics and, and listen everybody live replay etc everybody's expecting for this conversation to be about business and how to build a team and how to make gazillions and Listen, that's all bullshit. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> listen to Kristen and listen to what's driving her, the passion behind her words and her life and her husband and her kids and her, yes, and her team. But this is from inside who she is that's driving the success. She can teach you guys, and she has. How have you, the last two years, how many trainings have you done on team building and how to prospect and how to – you guys do a freaking video every week. You would have got it by now. You follow me? What I'm looking to show everybody is it's what's inside. <clears throat> it's your why. Her why is so freaking huge. Yeah, got it. Today she's balancing out, but it's still from the why. It's the why that she wants to be around longer. She wants to love longer. She wants different things. But the why of success and health and family hasn't changed. It just wisdom kicked in. And it's like, hey, let's balance out. And now, obviously, we know <clears throat> why this whole quarantine thing happened because of her. She yeah. created this thing. <laughs> so <clears throat> thank you for that. Uh, so here's, Kristen, Here, a couple of questions for you. What would you... Going back 21 years, we'll just go back to that point when you guys met <clears throat> 17 and then got pregnant. Uh, what? Any regrets? No, not on that. No, no, no. And just overall, just in the last 21 years. Oh, my gosh. Of course. Okay. Like, I'm not perfect. So, obviously, there's things I could have done differently as a wife, as a mom, as a leader, as a sister, you know, as a daughter. There's, I've made so many mistakes. So definitely there's things that I wish I could have done better. Sure. You mentioned sister and we didn't talk. Can we talk about your brother? Sure. Is that okay? So I, I don't know how many people know this story, but you lost your brother. Uh, I forget exactly the how long ago, but you mentioned that you could have been a better sister. <clears throat> what? What regrets do you have there? Because everybody has siblings or a loved one or et cetera. So when that time comes and it's over, like my father passed in November, boop, done, gone. I lost a sister 12 years ago. Yeah, 10, 11 years ago now. And when it was over, it was just done. You couldn't say I love you again. You couldn't send a text. You couldn't have fear again. It was just like, boom, it's over. So for you, what's that regret? So it's great. So I have three brothers and... The oldest of the three is my full biological brother. And I probably haven't spoken to him in a couple of years. And it was kind of funny because I talked to my grandmother yesterday and she gave me his phone number because I haven't had it. Like the numbers we've had weren't his or he wasn't responding or whatever. Mm. And so I just yesterday got his phone number. Um, but he's Sometimes they have to go their own path and they don't want you to be involved. And sure. that's hard. Um, and then my middle brother is kind of crazy because it was the youngest, the one that died when he was 16. And he, so there's a, obviously a big age difference between us. I was 13 years older than my youngest brother. And my mom, when I got married, she actually got remarried and moved to Pennsylvania. So she was several hours away and took the two younger ones with her. And so I didn't see him as much 
growing up, you know, after Travis and I had gotten married. And it's so crazy how um, God works. He gives the summer before he died. He actually gave the birth of us for the summer. Mm. It worked for us. He was, he was 16 and he worked for our interview business. Yeah. It was a relationship that I didn't have with him. That I got to have. And his biological father lived, you know, in the same area and he got he spent some time with him. It was kind of like he made his rounds. And before, because he actually passed away in Las Vegas. My mom, I moved out there to live with my aunt. And he was the only kid that was still living at home. And so he went with her. And we would have to have two hours for me to it's tell the whole story. Um, <laughs> And it could be a movie, like, as painful as, like, his death is. He brought so much healing to our family. And my daughter, um, the one that's a year and a half older than him, was on a really bad path. He was with the drugs. He, got stabbed because someone thought he had drugs and he didn't and all this thing and he now is a youth pastor and and when he it's kind of crazy because his name is Shane he he was a typical teenager but when he came and he stayed with us and when we spent time with you know his dad's family he got really, really close to the Lord and just like a super fast track relationship. And he was so frustrated with the world and he wanted to save his friends and he wanted to be that person. And especially in Las Vegas, he was like, nobody cares about that here. <laughs> like, yeah. He's like, when they call it Sin City, he's like, that's absolutely true. Like. And he just couldn't reach the people and he was very frustrated with it. And at his funeral, which was back in Maryland, because that's where you know, he was from, you know, a bunch of his friends from school came from Pennsylvania down and like about 30 of his friends were saved at his funeral. So what he couldn't do with his life, he was able to do with his life. Hmm. And that's just the beginning of all the things that have come out of that relationship. But you asked about my regret, and obviously I would have treasured that time if I had with him a lot more if I would have I found random pictures that, <laughs> like, some of them would be, like, the back of his head, or we just had, like, a litter of puppies, and it was, like, cut off, and I'm like, if you would just realize how precious that's deep <clears throat> i got people saying they're bawling they're crying <laughs> it's what it is what a phenomenal story so <clears throat> let's wrap with this question thank you for sharing that and thank you for being transparent, vulnerable, etc. because our experiences are what make us today and being able to share them with people. And if that story right there can inspire one person to love more, to be around more, to respect more, to give more, then shit, we've done it. So thank you for, for going there. Um, how important is God? I am so blessed that, you know, I pretty much have had a relationship with God my entire life. Um, I had that, you know, had my grandmother and of course my mom and dad also, but 
really my grandmother was that consistent person and I've had that strength because honestly that is what's given me strength you know to find the hope like I think um you know my middle name is hope I think appropriately <laughs> um and without God I don't think there is hope in mm. that and just having that strength and knowing, like, even when things are really bad, just having the hope that things were going to get better and that this was not happening to me, but for me. And it was making me that strong person that I needed to be. Um, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but, you know, I'm not at the highest rank that I could be at, obviously, and not just even in this business, but just in life, you can always level up. I don't think there's ever a time that you're like, I, there's nowhere higher I can go from here. But I knew that I wasn't strong enough to do that. Like I had basically reached my limit of where I was. And that also was spiritually, not just physically or mentally. And that I needed this time this year um, to build myself back up and to get stronger and develop myself so I can be worthy of being that person. And if if you feel like you're not where you want to be in life, it's because you're not ready. And so mm. you have to be willing to go through the hard things because no one grows through the easy like you don't learn lessons through mm. the easy. Um, that's good it through the hard and just like our relationship our marriage would mean nothing if we've never gone through anything hard together there would be no trust there because if things were always sunshine and rainbows i wouldn't know that he's there for me no matter what and so those times of trials is what brought that forth and so the same thing in life like you know one of the verses that i kind of cling on to which is very random i don't think a lot of people write this down in their house but it's considerate pure joy when you face trials of many kind because the testing of your faith produces perseverance and let perseverance finish its work in you so that you can be mature and complete and not lacking anything. And so if you're going through hell, <laughs> don't curse it. Try to figure out what you can learn from it and allow it to shape you and mold you to who you need to be. Bam. That's deep. <clears throat> Winston Churchill said, if you think you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> that was amazing uh what a what a phenomenal well-rounded conversation i'm i'm like i'm i'm going to end this and i'm i'm going to go hug my girls uh because everything's so freaking precious i mean the time that we we get that we sometimes take for for granted it's like oh tomorrow i'll uh, you know just uh later and we put things off and it's like you know there we we have you know this this moment it's called a present because it's a gift <clears throat> and um and what we do with it is obviously up to us so sounds like you have done tremendous and i'm talking about you as a person because at the end of the day like you said money no money houses no houses who you are <clears throat> is that person that's gonna show up to whatever the situation may be you can make more money get more houses you know, it's just, they're tangible things, but who you are, who <clears throat> that spirit, that mindset, that wife, that mother, that badass, that's, um, so who you've become is really, really inspiring. And I know for a fact, everybody watching this live replay podcast, YouTube, etc. your ass has just got handed to you. <laughs> so, ha ha. <laughs> So Kristen, thank you so much. This was, uh, it was, it was moving on a few different levels. So thank you for being vulnerable and 
transparent. Congratulations on your health success. You've dropped a bunch of weight. I'll tell you a funny story. Yesterday when I put up the yesterday morning, when I put up the the announcement for this live, I there was obviously my picture, your picture, and that graphic. And then uh a friend of mine texts me, he goes, Bro, you got the wrong picture. That's not Kristen. And I said, I said, Bro, that's Kristen, but she's dropped a bunch of weight. He's like, shut the up and uh so huge compliment for you and uh congratulations you're obviously just kicking ass and love you guys thank you for your time and um we'll talk soon thank you i enjoyed it good and thank you for saying yes <laughs> <laughs> i reluctantly said yes i know i'm glad i did amen amen thank you guys again have a phenomenal phenomenal thursday <laughs> all right thanks Bye. thank you all right, everybody. So we freaking did it. What a conversation that was, man. It inspired me to do all kinds of fun stuff. And I'm talking about how to do more in life. And you heard it's not about the money, not about the houses, but how to become that better spirit. And whether you're a believer in God or your mindset and you're into science, it doesn't matter. There's more to do in all that space. So great, great conversation. As you guys know, uh, we'll be back with the Hemp Ambition next Thursday, every single Thursday, 2 p.m. This coming Tuesday, of course, is Who's a Badass? Uh, the guest is Tim Larkin, ex-Navy SEAL, complete. I mean, he'll he'll scare you. He's huge. He's like freaking wide and tall and buff. And uh, today he runs a, a company. Uh, well, he has a few companies like the machine gun in Las Vegas. You go to shoot machine guns. That's his. And But then he also coaches and teaches people self-defense in the home and how to protect yourself. So we'll talk uh, to him on Tuesday. And that's the last day of the month. Uh, it'll be exciting because the next day, April 1st, is very exciting. <clears throat> Not because it's April Fool's, it's just because of what's happening in the world. So with all that said, you guys know the rules. Uh, the person that tags the most will get that bottle of 500 milligram CBD oil and uh, share this information. You guys know what to do. So if you didn't uh, do a watch party during the actual live, then please share it. Just literally click the share button, get it out there to the world. And of course, uh, you know get the information out because I know that story right there, everything Kristen talked about, poof, mind blown. That's it. Uh, again, go to the podcast uh, platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud. Uh, what's the other one? Hang tight. Cause I Spotify, geez Louise, <laughs> Spotify, and you'll find the hemp ambition. You'll find who's a badass. Subscribe to both, please drop uh, five stars, download the the episodes and uh we'll obviously every single week we'll have new material up there for you guys to listen to and anybody you feel that you know that should be interviewed on uh, the hemp ambition or who's a badass please send them my way i would love um would love to meet your friends with that said you guys thank you again this is the hemp ambition show coming to you live every single thursday at 2 p.m pacific and uh until next week i love you peace out